Hello everyone and welcome back for some more Drag Race gossip, secrets and drama. So I'm back for another Roscoe's recap and this viewing party was for season 16 episode 7 and the guest this week was Plasma. Today we're going to be talking about the unaired moment in the episode when production interfered with the rehearsal, some backstage tea about Sephira Cristal's runway look this week, and Plasma tells us the truth about her relationship with Plain Jane after their feud in Untucked. All that and more coming up in today's video, so let's get started. So they started off with Nasha saying that she's excited to hear Plasma spill all the behind the scenes tea at Roscoe's, and Nasha then joked and said, quote, I want to hear your opinion on everyone, meaning plain Jane. And everyone laughed and Plasma slid down her chair, and Nasha said of course she had to say it. Plasma then said that she was on a flight the other day and the flight attendant was doing the drink service and came up to Plasma and said, quote, I'm such a fan, is plain Jane really that big of a C word? And everyone laughed. And Plasma apparently just replied and said, quote, I'll just have a Diet Coke, please. And in general, Plasma was really funny and high energy in this viewing party and there were also a few shady but funny comments and they kept making jokes that Plasma talks so quickly and she's really witty. So I'm condensing down a lot of what Plasma said in this viewing party to try and keep this video succinct, but you should definitely go and watch the full viewing party on Roscoe's channel after this video because it was really fun to watch. And as always, there will be a link in the description. Anyway, they then moved on and started talking about this week's episode, and Nasha asked what it was like with Geneva's elimination. And Plasma said that they all knew that Maya is the Queen of Flips, so it wasn't that much of a surprise that Maya killed the lip sync. Plasma also said that in any competition, there's a moment when you have to size up your competitor and you know that they are better at you than something. And presumably she was talking about Maya and Geneva in the lip sync. And Plasma said that the same thing happened to her every time that she was up against Q in a design challenge. But Caramel mentioned that this episode it was actually the other way around because the Rusical is exactly what Plasma is good at so the others were probably scared to go up against Plasma. And Plasma said that what they didn't show in the episode is that when the queens were choosing their roles for the Rusical, Plasma said that in the RDR live challenge she didn't get the role that she wanted. But the other queens said that Plasma was forced into that role but she still won the challenge. And Plasma said, quote, So imagine what's going to happen if you give me the role that I want and I fall on my face, then you'll feel real proud of yourself. And it was kind of implied as though she was trying reverse psychology so that she would get the role she wanted in the Rusical. Nasha then joked and said, quote, Manipulation. Nasha then asked about how Plasma was feeling when she realised how big her role was in the Rusical. And Plasma joked that she was worried that she would become the next Lucy Laduca because Lucy also had the main role in the Rusical on season 15 and ended up in the bottom. And in the episode, they showed that Plasma didn't realise how big her role was, and she had scenes with everyone, including the three villains. And Batty Davis asked how Plasma didn't realise that she had scenes with them. Plasma explained that the queens only listened to the track all the way through once, and then they had to pick their roles. And Plasma was just so focused on wanting the main role that she was looking up her lines, but she wasn't paying attention to the different scenes. And also, according to Plasma, production told her that she had to go and sit with the trio who had the roles of the nuns and go through their section first. And then they told Plasma that she had to go and sit with the Von Snaps trio. And then when Plain, Tsunami and Q came over and said that they had a scene also with Plasma, Plasma hadn't even had time to get to that part yet in the script because she'd been told to go and sit with the other two groups first. Nasha then asked who Plasma was most nervous for in the challenge based on the work room walkthrough. And Plasma said, quote, well, Megami spent most of her time complaining instead of learning her part, so I was concerned about her. And I'd like to take a moment to say thank you to the sponsor of this video, Honkai Star Rail. Honkai Star Rail is a new multi-platform space fantasy RPG from Hoyoverse, who are the makers of Genshin Impact. This game has won multiple awards including Best Mobile Game at the TGA and it's available on mobile devices, PC and even PS5. 
This latest version 2.0 introduces the new world of Penacony, which features a plethora of maps, brand new characters, and exciting adventures to embark on. While Penacony may appear to be a luxurious hotel, it has a mysterious hidden side that can only be accessed through the realm of dreams. There are also fabulous new characters, including Black Swan, an elegant woman who practices divination using a crystal ball and cards, and she exudes a mysterious aura. And there's also Sparkle, a mischievous and unpredictable quantum-type harmony character capable of restoring skill points for her allies. And you'll also get the amazing character of Dr. Ratio for free if you download the game today. Use the link in the description to download the game today, and you can also use the two redemption codes which I'll also put in the description and you'll obtain 50 Stellar Jade. So make sure you download Honkai Star Rail today and join in the fun and also unlock the mysteries of Penacony. And Thanks again to Honkai Star Rail for sponsoring this video. Plasma also jokingly said that Plain Jane and Q are good at being their quote stupid villain dumb ass selves, whereas Tsunami isn't, and apparently Tsunami spent all of her time trying to emulate Plain Jane, and Plasma said quote, I don't know why anyone would do that. They then moved on to the part with the rehearsal on the main stage with Adam Shankman, and Plasma mentioned the moment when Melissa McCarthy came in as the special guest and started throwing Baby Bell cheeses at them. And Plasma said, It's really disgusting, but when they were sitting on the side of the stage later watching the other queens rehearse, they all balled up the wax from the Baby Bell, and they all stuck it underneath the underside of the chairs. And Plasma said it was a bit like high school students sticking chewing gum under the chairs at school. Plasma also said they didn't show this in the episode, but when she was rehearsing with Adam on stage on her own, she did actually fall over. And apparently Adam wasn't even looking and started talking about something else, but then Plasma said that Adam must have got a notification from production in his earpiece, and then he paused for a moment. And then Adam apparently turned around and said, quote, Plasma, you're really going to need to step your pussy up if you're going to lead this musical. And Plasma joked that Adam's reaction was so delayed that Plasma had already stood back up again and was already running through the choreography again. And it sounds like Plasma was implying that Adam was kind of told what he needed to say, or he was at least told that he needed to react to Plasma falling over and say something dramatic, even though he didn't actually see it happen and they had already moved on. And this is obviously quite an interesting insight into how a reality TV show is made. And Plasma said that when Adam paused and was holding his earpiece, he then turned back around and he had clearly been told that he needed to react to Plasma falling over, even though the moment had already passed. And Plasma clearly realised how produced the TV show is, and she said, quote, I was like, B, this is some television. They then moved on to later in the episode when RuPaul came out onto the main stage, and Plasma said, quote, Can we talk about what RuPaul is wearing? And Nasha said, quote, Hold on, first of all, do you want to stay in her good graces? And it was kind of implied that Plasma was going to say something negative about Ru's look, but then decided not to. And Plasma said what she will say about Rue's outfit is that when Plasma was preparing for the season, she went to a jeweller in New York who made the jewels for her share headpiece for the runway. And the jeweller said that the next day, he had an appointment with Zoldi, who is RuPaul's stylist, and the jeweller was helping to make RuPaul's runway package for season 16. And Plasma said that she was gagged that she and Rue were having their outfits made by the same person. And then Plasma then saw what RuPaul was wearing this episode, and she said that she only saw it from the waist up because RuPaul is always sitting behind the judges' table. And Plasma said that when she saw Ru's outfit, she thought, quote, that is a beautiful loofah, and everyone laughed. Nasha then asked how much time they get to rehearse for the Rusical, and Plasma said that each episode of Drag Race takes about two and a half days to film. So they got given the challenge on Friday, and they had about an hour to film the rehearsal segment with Adam. But then they came back in for a nine-hour rehearsal on Saturday, which is when they actually learned the choreography. They then watched the Rusical and got to the moment when Plasma won the challenge, and everyone cheered and clapped for Plasma. 
They then asked how Plasma felt watching back the Rusical, and Plasma said she's usually very self-conscious because she's a performer and she doesn't like to watch herself. But Plasma said, quote, I dunno, I think I kind of ate that, and everyone agreed and cheered for Plasma. They then moved on to the runway for this week, and the category was I Could Buy Myself Flowers. And they went through each queen's outfit and asked Plasma if she would give it tens if she likes it, or a chop if she doesn't like it. And when they got to Plain Jane's outfit, Plasma said, quote, Based on how much she's bragging about how much she spent on her runway package, I think she should have spent a little bit more. Chop. And everyone was kind of gagged and laughed. And when they got to Sephira's outfit, Plasma said that she loved the outfit, and Plasma also spilled a little bit of backstage tea. Plasma said that this was not Sephira's entire outfit, and apparently there were two even bigger petals in the back of the costume originally, but they told Sephira that she had to chop them out because they physically couldn't fit through the runway door because they were so big. And in the episode, during Sephira's runway, she did make a comment during her runway commentary and said, quote, I'm such a big flower I can barely fit on the runway. And after hearing this backstage tea from Plasma, perhaps Sephira was actually vaguely referring to this during her runway commentary, but just didn't say the full bit. And when they got to Morphine's look, Plasma said that everyone else turned up in huge flower costumes this week, but Morphine showed up, quote, in a Nakira pantsuit, and everyone laughed. And then Caramel said that Nasia loves Akira, so Plasma then said, quote, she showed up in a Shein pantsuit, and everyone laughed again. And just in case you don't know, Akira and Shein are both fashion retailers, but they generally have a reputation from what I can gather for offering quite cheap or low quality products. They then talked about the lip sync between the bottom two this week, which was Megami and Maya Iman LePage, and they asked Plasma if she agreed with the outcome of the lip sync. Plasma mentioned that Dawn had said in the confessional during the lip sync that taking off your shoes is a cardinal sin on Drag Race, and this was because Maya had taken off her shoes. And Plasma said she does think that Maya outperformed Megami, but she said that Maya, quote, broke the rules. And because Maya took her shoes off and also bits of her outfit were coming off, it was, quote, a little bit less organised. But Plasma said part of the excitement of drag is that not everything goes according to plan, but Plasma joked that this was quote her pageant answer. Nasha then said she wasn't sure who won the lip sync, but she mentioned the moment that Maya slid across the stage on her stomach. And Batty Davis called this quote her free willy, and Nasha said that it was Batty who said free willy, not her, so don't come for Nasha. And Nasha said that she would have called it a slip and slide instead. But Nasha then said that she thinks that the slip and slide is what made Maya win the lip sync. And Nasha also said she can talk from experience and said that RuPaul hates when wigs and shoes come off. And Nasha said her shoe apparently came off on Drag Race, and apparently RuPaul sometimes makes a decision about the lip sync solely based on that, because it quote really bothers her when hair and shoes come off. And Nasha said she finds it so ironic that RuPaul hates when hair and shoes come off, when RuPaul is, quote, sitting behind that judge's table with no shoes, in slippers and pyjama pants. So for her to be that way, I think it's kind of ironic. And everyone was a bit gagged that Nasha was kind of calling Ru out, and people laughed. Plasma then said that she needed to go to the bathroom, so while they were waiting, Caramel asked Nasha about when the queens get eliminated, how long is it between the eliminated queen walking off stage and then going to the workroom to pack up their stuff for Untucked. Nasha said that as soon as you walk off stage after being eliminated, you have to go back to the workroom and film that part where you write the lipstick mirror message, but then after that you're held alone in another room. And during that time, they take the remaining queen back to the workroom and they film the segment where the queens come in and read the mirror message and then de-drag and this footage is then used at the start of the next episode but it's actually all filmed at the same time. Nasha also said that because the eliminated queen has to wait for the other queens to film all of that segment and also de-drag, they also have to have dinner and then leave the set, so the eliminated queen is waiting in a room on their own, usually for multiple hours. And production come and give you makeup wipes so that you can de-drag. And then, only once all the queens are de-dragged and they've left the workroom and they've gone back to the hotel, they then bring the eliminated queen back into the workroom to film the segment for Untucked where the queens pack up their stuff and read the notes from the queens. 
And Naysha also said that you only pack one suitcase for camera and then you have to film yourself leaving, but then it's assumed that you have to come back into the workroom once the cameras have cut to actually pack up the rest of your stuff. And overall, Naysha said that after you get eliminated, you're just waiting around in a room on your own for upwards of a few hours. They then moved on to the Q&A section, and someone asked where the name Plasma comes from. And Plasma said that she used to live next to a blood plasma donation centre during her undergrad, and she thought that the name Plasma sounded cool. Another question that they asked was what did Plasma steal from the set of Drag Race? And Plasma said she stole a piece of the wall from the workroom. And we We've heard this from other queens at previous Roscoe's, that the walls in the workroom are made of just a piece of fabric, and so queens in the past have just used scissors to cut the piece of a wall to keep as a souvenir. Naysha then said that on All Stars 8, Naysha cut a huge door-sized piece of fabric from the wall because the other cast members did want some of the fabric, but they were too scared to do it themselves. So Naysha cut a massive piece of fabric and then cut off some of it and gave it to everyone else. And Naysha said that the set for the workroom then goes into storage after each season. And she asked Plasma if there was still a huge chunk of the wall missing when they filmed season 16. And Plasma said, quote, no, we made a new chunk. Plasma also said she wanted to steal her outfit from the Rusical, but production said she wasn't allowed to. And Naysha said that on All Stars 8, she actually stole Jessica Wilde's costume, and production kept chasing Jessica and asking her to give the outfit back because they thought that Jessica had stolen it, but Naysha said that she had the outfit the whole time. An audience member then asked a question and said that during the girl group challenge, why did Plasma choose to put Amanda and Plain Jane on the same team, knowing that they had had tension in the previous episodes? Plasma said, quote, There's something about going on RuPaul's Drag Race that isn't about competing on talent or merit, and that is called making good television. I think I had the opportunity to make good television, and I did. Another audience member then asked, how quickly do the queens receive the prize money that they get for winning the episode, such as the $5,000 that Plasma won in this episode? Plasma paused and seemed to hesitate, and Naysha then said that there are some things that the queens are not allowed to talk about because they're contractually obligated. But Naysha said that based on past experience, she knows that some queens have refused to leave their hotel room until the check clears. But then, on All Stars 8, the queens were told that they would all get paid when the show airs, and apparently they were having a dinner with the entire cast when the show came out, and everyone all got paid at the same time and they all got notifications on their phones at the exact same time. But Plasma said she actually had a really positive experience and said that after the season wrapped with filming, when they got back home, Everyone who had won money in the challenge already had the money waiting for them in their bank accounts when they got home. Naysha also said that the money that they get from the show is really important, and even when they're filming the show, because the queens aren't working, they're also not earning. But they still need to spend all of the money, and they also have to give money to the PAs when they're on set, so that the PAs can go out and buy them makeup or anything else that the queens run out of during filming. And Plasma said that she didn't want to eat the, quote, bull bleep food that they were serving them on set, so Plasma gave a PA her credit card and made them go out and buy different food for her. Another audience member then mentioned the moment in Untucked from earlier in the season, when Plain Jane came for Amanda, and Plasma clapped back at Plain Jane and told her to untangle her arm hair from her bracelet. And the audience member asked if there were any other queens that clapped back at Plain Jane. Plasma said she hopes that other queens did clap back at Plain, but Plasma said she can't remember because she was drunk. Naysha then asked what Plasma's relationship is like with Plain Jane. Plasma paused and said, quote, Plain Jane is a professional. She knows how to make excellent television, and we worked together on a television program called RuPaul's Drag Race. And then Plasma paused again and said, quote, What's the next question? And everyone laughed. And finally, someone asked who Plasma is rooting for to win the season apart from herself. And Plasma said that she is really close to Safira Crystal, even though they didn't show it much in the episodes, so she's rooting for Safira. And Plasma said that Safira really helped her get through some, quote, tricky mental health crises on the show. They then asked Plasma who she did not connect with from the cast, and they mentioned Plain Jane. And Plasma said that Plain is a professional and knows when to turn it off and on for the camera. But then Plasma said, quote, sometimes. 
But then Plasma said, quote, I hate to say it, we genuinely actually like each other a lot, which is such a disappointing answer. And Naysha said that Plain Jane is actually really good TV and she's really enjoying her on the show because it's fun to watch. So there you go, there was the Roscoe's recap for RuPaul's Drag Race Season 16 Episode 7. Let me know in the comments if you agreed with the outcome of this episode and who are you rooting for in the season. I'd also like to say thank you so much to my amazing Patreon members who help support me and keep my channel going. In the You're a Winner Baby tier we have Christian, Emerald1508, Ethan, Lisa, PC Smush, Rochelle and Rachel. And in the Shantae You Stay tier we have Amy, Becky, Charlie, David, Linda, Shelby and Craig. Seriously, you are all such legends and your support is really so invaluable to me and my channel, so thank you all so, so much. And if you'd like to get early access to my videos such as this one, as well as a raft of other benefits, please consider joining my Patreon and supporting my channel, and I'll put a link in the description. Please make sure you like, comment and share this video as it really helps support my channel. And of course, please make sure you hit the subscribe button to stay up to date about new uploads. Thanks again for watching and I hope you'll join me again in future videos. Thank you, bye!